Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode number 13, dated May 17th, 2016, of my Banker Education Series webinar show. This is Eric Cook, and I'm with WSI Digital Marketing, where we work with businesses and organizations on helping them better understand and leverage the power of the Internet as a strategic business tool, particularly in the community banking and financial services space. You can learn more about me kind of uh, pick it around the poweredbywsi.com website if you are so inclined. And I'm very excited that you are joining me for what uh, I know is going to be an awesome show with my good friend Don Crosby, um, otherwise uh, referred to as the, let me just see, the behavioral, let me see, what was the, the behavioral locksmith. I drew a little blank there. Sorry about that, Don. Um, before we go ahead and get started, I'm just so excited to jump in and talk to you. I completely blew my intro there. But uh, before we get started, I just want to welcome again everybody. If you joined us because you saw maybe a post on social media or referred by a friend and you would like to sign up for future webinars for the Bank Registration Series, if you visit poweredbywsi.com slash BES or Banker Education Series, you'll notice that there's a link in the first paragraph where you can actually put your email address in there and that will sign you up for future notifications and you can join us on the show. I also want to let everybody know that all Banker Education Series webinars are recorded and made available at this BES page. So if you scroll down, you'll notice that the episode 12, which was with Jill Castile and Tim Marshall, a couple of bank CEOs that are completely killing it on social media and leading the charge for their organization. Uh, that was a great show. You can see that the big green buttons there uh, will take you directly to our YouTube channel and you can go ahead and do those at your leisure. So we uh, will get this one updated as well. And if you would like to share this or any of the other shows with friends or colleagues, please feel free to do so and just send them the link. They can register as well. And uh, hopefully we'll see you and maybe them on future shows. So with that uh, intro and kind of some housekeeping items, I do want to make, I guess, one other housekeeping notification here. If you are interested in asking a question um, or making a comment, please feel free to do so during the show. I will keep an eye on those and you can use the chat functionality which is located over on the right hand side of your screen and that will give you the ability to go ahead and send your comments to us. Uh, very much appreciate and like when we have engagement from our live audience, so feel free to do so uh, if you have something that you would like to talk about. With that out of the way, while I work the magic of GoToWebinar and I send the presentation and screen over to Don Crosby, um, I would like to provide a little bit of an intro about how I know Don and uh, kind of set the stage maybe a little bit for today. Um, back when I was a community banker, oh, many moons ago, um, I had uh, somebody that worked for me. Uh, I kind of oversaw the marketing department as the chief operating officer for Marshall Savings Bank. And um, I'll call her Becky. Um, she uh, worked for me, and we had a good relationship, and everything worked really well between us. But there were times when I would give her a project or she would ask me uh, something and it just, you know, until I had an opportunity to chat with Don, it seemed like there was just uh, something wasn't quite right. It wasn't her, it wasn't me. It was just like, felt like I had to explain things to her multiple times. And uh, after Don and I and Becky actually sat down and went through everything together, we came to the realization once we understood one another's personality and decision-making style that I was very much, uh, I don't want to say a pie-in-the-sky kind of guy, but I was very much a big-picture person and didn't realize that she was very much a detail-orientated person. And when we both had an opportunity to get to know one another through what Don does, um, it gave me a realization that I needed to be a little bit more exact and detailed when I provided her with instructions on things to do or tasks or projects. And she needed to be comfortable approaching me and saying, hey, I need a little bit more detail and knowing that that wouldn't offend me or put her in a position of maybe looking bad. And literally, it took us five minutes to do the questions that Don has. 
and after about 15 minutes of let me introduce you to each other and this is where I think you guys might be experiencing some challenges um, Don didn't know her at all knew me pretty well um, and I would dare say that the relationship between her and myself was forever changed way more efficient way more productive and we even joke about uh, instances where I reverted back to my old style or she was asking questions and we kind of played off of uh, the ProScan report and said now you know your ProScan says and we chuckled about it but it made our relationship so much better and even though we had worked together for a number of years it wasn't until Don helped us literally flatten that learning curve that the true value of our working relationship really blossomed. And so um, I promise I'm going to let Don talk here in a little bit. But I just, I'm really excited that Don is here because he did a lot of great things for us at our bank when he had an opportunity to come in and talk to people and do the assessments. And we know all too well that success in, in almost everything in life is either knowing yourself or knowing the people that you're interacting with and the best way to go about doing that. And Don, has uh, an amazing talent and some pretty impressive technology that helps him do that. So with with that uh, rather long-winded intro, but I wanted to build you up because, I, you know, Don, I am a huge fan of yours. I'm really excited that we finally were able to get this to work, um, and you're here joining me on, uh, on my latest episode of the BES. So, Don, I will let you talk. Welcome to the Banker Education <laughs> Series. <laughs> Eric, thank you very much. So we, I think, I think we've got some audio. With are you? If we could have, uh, if we could have the audience just confirm, it, it sounds to me a little bit like Don is kind of losing audio. Can we have some folks out there in the live audience maybe comment back and let us know whether you're hearing Don okay or if it's on my end. Go ahead and post a note into the chat area if you would please. So Yep. Test Don. One, two, three, testing five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Yeah, we're getting some bad Can audio you hear connection me? too. Yep, that's better. Go ahead and keep talking. We've got a couple people that are commenting. Okay. Mark, can you hear me okay? So Testing five, six, Don, seven, eight. Yes. Yeah. Looks like what we may need you to do, Don, is we might need to have you switch your audio from voice over IP to the telephone and just uh, dial up that phone number and come on. So should I, I transfer permission right now before I do that? Um, nope. You can just go to your audio settings and flip it from mic and speakers to phone and then dial back in. Um, we've got your slides here, so we can go ahead and uh, just wait for you to do that. Sorry for that, everybody. When Don and I were talking pre-show, everything seemed to be working just fine, but as those of you that have joined me either here on BES or on my free webinar Wednesday's weekly show, uh, we know all too well that the gremlins over at GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar tend to raise their ugly heads right when um, you least expect it. So we'll, uh, we'll let Don go ahead and switch his audio around and get dialed back in. So we should be good to go here in just a little bit. So um, while Don is doing that, I do want to let everybody know um, we did, uh, as part of today's presentation, um, I know uh, hopefully you caught it, uh, but as part of the notification for today's show, we were asking for volunteers and we actually um, had an individual give back and uh, we were able to get this individual. We will refer to her as Sally in today's show, but uh, Sally was able to go ahead and uh, get connected with Don and went through the process of actually filling out the questionnaire and uh, answering the questions and uh, about midway through today's show, Don is actually going to take an opportunity. We'll pull Sally on and we're going to go and introduce Sally to herself and share some insights and just kind of get some validation. Um, Don knows me really well. I've done the ProScan assessment a number of times 
as I've gone through and done disk analysis and Myers-Briggs, some of the other personality profiling platforms. Um, and so Don knows me pretty well. So it wouldn't really be super revealing if we were to just have Don introduce me to the rest of you because uh, that's really not a challenge. Um, so Don, uh, yes, just confirm sure. if you are back. There we go. I am back. I am back. And Excellent. Thank you for that. I appreciate that very much. And one of the things I was just mentioning is that uh, the assets of what I do is the relationships that I meet through the years. And uh, Eric, you are one of those assets that uh, I, I dearly cherish. So I appreciate the friendship and the opportunity to be here. And so, absolutely, we're you know and, we're, and, we're venturing on a kumbaya moment here. You know that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, one of the things I always talk about is, uh, uh, you know, why do we do what we do? And uh, mine is through passion and, and, and really through the technology that's pretty interesting and, and very deep and very dynamic, yet simple and, and very profound. But, uh, you know, through the years of, of working with uh, so many companies and, and people, and I guess one of the things, Eric, that we're talking about today is that there's a direct correlation between the career of being at, at the bank and then also the personal side of life because it's one of the same. Uh, when, we work with companies, when we work with companies, it's really, you know, the person uh, represents, you know, the workforce, but it's, uh, it's not just one person. It's actually the entire substance of their personal life. And family, and so uh, yep. you know we, we've got the experience. But one of the questions that I've asked myself ever since Eric, for you know since I was very young, which is actually very profound that I do what I do. But have you ever wondered why you do what you do? But when you know, when you looked around when you were young and, and you saw your brothers and sisters and, and mom and dad and aunts and uncles, and the natural behavior is to compare ourselves among ourselves. But so many people just you know they they don't necessarily want to venture in to really ask themselves, why do I do what I do? They may wonder, but they don't really get too very deep to it. But one, of my, one of my favorite quotes is one by Mark Twain, where the two most important days in your life, the day you're born, the day you find out why. And uh, boy, I tell you, the, the aspect of, of not finding who you are is a very sad circumstance. You know, a lot of people really, really don't know it. You know, Eric, you mentioned the pro scan, you mentioned the tool, and one of the biggest obstacles that we have with with what I do, basically, is that uh, we don't think of an assessment as a tool. We think of an assessment as something that is uh, something that maybe I've done or haven't done, or I'm not, I'm, I'm not really interested in doing, they think maybe it's possibly the best. But when we put things in perspective of tools, there's very little that we can do today without the use of a tool. Uh, as a slide, we have a picture of a hammer and a nail, but if we were going to ha we hang a picture, we'd want a very delicate hammer. We would want a large hammer. And so the success of what we do in today's life is really uh, has a direct correlation of, of the type of tool we use. Yeah. And it can be very... Hey, Don, uh, yes. Just, just uh, if, if uh, I think maybe your screen might be paused. Um, we are still showing just a smaller version of PowerPoint, and uh, we're still on the title slide. So I just want to double check and make really? sure that we mistakenly hit the pause button. So go ahead and make yeah. sure that you've got the play. I don't know if uh, others can uh, can comment if you're seeing the same screen as what I am with the uh, the why you do. Which, by the way, I forgot to mention, Don is also a published author, and uh, the book Why You Do is uh, available, and I'm the lucky owner of one of those copies, and uh, reading it makes me feel like I'm talking to you, which is uh, kind of a joy. I actually keep that up at the, at the Lake um, Cottage. That's a, a good read uh, while I'm up there just kind of relaxing. Thank you. So, so can you see my screen now, Eric? I've got a pro scan survey. Um, we're still seeing the why you do slide. I, I don't know. I, I don't understand. Uh, you know, would you like to just uh, take back the permission and then you handle the slides and, and then I'll just yep. uh, Why don't I go ahead and do that? So let me change mm -hmm. the presenter back to myself. And I don't know what the, what the difficulty is. I apologize for the uh, technology. Show my screen. 
we're going to go into presentation mode. And let me know if the screen has changed for everybody. Now we should see the nice, big, fluffy Why You Do screen with Don Crosby and moving forward. There's a lovely picture of Don, 25 years experience. I think we are in good shape now. Perfect. All right. There we go. So now we are on slide number two. Don, where would you like me to go next? Just, just keep going to um, slide number probably five. There's your Mark Twain quote. See, when you said your Mark Twain quote and the slides weren't changing, I got a little concerned that maybe something might be off, but I didn't want to Perfect. derail because you were, uh, you were on a roll there. So there's the Mark Twain quote that Don referenced earlier, and then we've got some hammers and some nails and the tools that we're using in order to accomplish what it is that we need to do in life. And now we're at the ProScan, the actual tool that you use to peer into the psyche. Excellent, perfect. And, and one of the things that draws us in today's culture is having the finest tools, whether it be a new phone, the fastest computer, uh, whatever it might be, is, is we're really drawn to the sharpest and, and most applicable tools. And the ProScan tool is, uh, is is one of those tools. Uh, I did not invent the tool, but the inventor, a gentleman by the name of Bruce Hubby, uh, he, he was my mentor. Uh, he was the designer of the instrument, it's been out 40 years, and uh, had the privilege of uh, implementing it for the last 25. But the brilliance of the tool is goes along with the simplicity where you get 60 adjectives and you'll see on one side is 30 there's 30 uh, adjectives and on the other side there are another 30 but these 60 adjectives mathematically are cross reference to 148,000 factors which means that the, 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 the immediacy of what it uh, measures is very uh, equivalent to say a behavioral MRI measures the entirety of someone's behavior. It measures their natural behavior, who they are. It measures the energies, stresses, and energies and energy drains and perceptions. So it's it's a very comprehensive process which takes most people anywhere for six, maybe seven minutes. And then of course uh, it was founded uh, for the business environment. It was, it was designed for hiring and uh, workforce development too, so it's EEOC and ADA compliant and it's a very powerful statistical tool and uh, you know, for, for years I had a uh, nationally hosted radio show where I introduced people to themselves and never did we have someone that came on the show where they said that the accuracy wasn't uh, absolutely uh, very, very point on. Uh, next slide, please, Eric. Well, actually, while we're on this slide, one of the questions that I typically will get, because I try to introduce you to every organization that I talk to, because every organization deals with people, um, I'll often get, uh, well, we're using DISC, or I mentioned Myers-Briggs, or it seems to be one of the more popular ones these days is PI, the predictive index. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for banks that may be either using a service like that or, or thinking about it, I know some of the banking schools um, are actually using some of these other tools as part of their curriculum when you get into the management functionality. Um, any pros or cons, or is this a complementary service to some of the other services that are out there? I don't want to put you in a position where you're bad-mouthing other tools, but What's the difference or similarities, or can they work kind of hand in hand with one another? That is that's a perfect question. And first of all, I applaud any company that's using a tool. Um, if they have it, uh, I, I hope they're thoroughly using it. Uh, I have met so many companies that have that use several tools. Uh, different departments will use a tool, but rather than having one tool go across the board uh, throughout different departments, typically a lot of companies will have. A variety of instruments. The the main difference of the ProScan is really the uh, the measurement of what it has to, it delivers. For example, uh, the disc is uh, you know it, it's it's a good four inch ruler. Uh, it just doesn't measure the the amount of behavior that the ProScan has. 
um, and the same way uh, the Myers Briggs, uh, it's a different, it's with six norming that doesn't really measure change. And uh, with PI, the PI is a nice tool. The biggest uh, uh, comparison between the PDP and the PI, uh, Eric, is that the, uh, the job modeling of the pro scheme is uh, fascinating. You can build a uh, behavioral model for any position within the bank in 30 to 45 minutes, and you just can't do that with any of these other tools. So it's a, uh, it's just uh, this is just a better tool. But once again, if if, if someone is, someone has another tool and they're using it, I applaud them. Uh, typically, uh, many companies are not trained in their tools, and therefore they're not using them effectively. So that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, this happens to be my uh, my scan here, and, and uh, you know people ask me what do I do, and I've, so I've labeled myself as a behavioral locksmith simply because I look at this graph and I can practically feel a person's heartbeat. When I look at the graph, I I just know them practically better than their parents know them, and I know it sounds really really weird, and it sounds uh, maybe even a little egotistical, but I don't mean it to sound that way. It just means that with this with this information, the statistical information that someone else completes, that the accuracy is just really quite phenomenal. And uh, I've looked at I don't know how many thousands of these graphs, and that's that's the reason that I, I think that I get such an in-depth uh, clarity. Uh, with the instrument, though, uh, there's a variety of different reports. For example, uh, we have a a person that's completed a scan and she received a 20 page report so someone doesn't have to just look at this page to understand who they are but there's a variety of different reports that we use so next slide please are you still there I put myself on mute sorry about that I was talking away and you couldn't hear what I was saying <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was saying before I realized that I had the mute button pressed on my phone is, can you provide a, a little bit of overview, and I know during today's show we're not going to have nearly enough time to dive into the details, but some of the dots, the bars, um, you've got the natural self, the priority environment, what that means, and then kind of the outward self predictor area. Maybe give the audience a little bit about this and, and kind of what this says about Don Crosby? Well, uh, another, another good question. The, the first column is the natural behavior, and in any relationship, we just really need to know who is this person and, 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 and honestly, why do they do what they do? And uh, in building a job model, we always take the natural behavior, this column. Uh, the DISCs uh, and many of the other programs, not to, to, to default or, or bash them in any way, but just how it compares and pretty much stop at the, at the fourth or fifth uh, column. And uh, with my style, Eric, uh, my style is very similar to yours. The highest traits the area of extroversion, which is that ease of intermixing and enjoying the talking with people and so forth. Uh, what the PDP looks at, we look at the combination of the traits. And you'll see in, in the first three columns, I have three above the line, which means my primary is extroversion, but right, right next to it is the area of patience, so I have the ability to listen naturally. And then also dominance, where if I need to, I can take charge and feel comfortable being in a leadership role. And then, of course, my conformity, which is the fourth trait out of the, out of, uh, below the line, which simply means that uh, regulations and Structures and details are something I prefer someone else to do rather than for me to abide in it. Uh, and uh, real intuitive guy with uh, lots of energy. But so that's the natural behavior. In the red is the area of, of priority environment. And the priority environment is, is the, uh, the element of change. And in roles of life, everybody has something that we're trying to be more or less of. At the bank, maybe, it's pr maybe you're up for a promotion. If you're a teller, maybe you uh, you just had some hard conversations with uh, some of the, uh, the clients that come through the bank. Uh, all these different types of things can cause us stress, and the stress is measured in this red environment based on the uh, the length of the lines and the positioning of the lines. 
And then in the area of the green, the green is the perception of how people perceive them to be. And uh, a lot of times what happens is people will try very hard to be somebody that they feel they need to be. And thus, they are perceived differently than they really are because they're so, trying so hard to fit the role or to fit the responsibility. So, uh, next Good. slide, my friend. Good. Made sure I was uh, off of mute when I said good. So let me, if you want to maybe kind of introduce this, I'm going to go ahead and find Sally, and I'm going to unmute her line and okay. take a look here. All right. So um, Sally is now unmuted, although depending on your computer settings, you may be dialing, um, using, looks like you're using voiceover IP. I don't know if you have a microphone connected to the computer that you're on. If for some reason you don't, um, we would like to get some audio feedback from you, obviously. If the way maybe you could talk a little bit just to see if we can hear you, Sally. Yeah, I think what may have happened is it looks like Sally may be using a computer maybe at the office that does not have a microphone. So assuming that you are hearing me okay, Sally, what you may want to do, uh, like what John did just a little bit ago, and Don, you could probably talk her through this, <laughs> is in the audio settings of your control panel, if you click on that, you'll see there are two options to connect to today's audio you probably have computer mic and speaker selected. If you change that to telephone, it'll temporarily drop you off and you'll be provided with a phone number that you can call. There we go. Looks like she's going to go ahead and do that real quick. So we'll, uh, we'll get Sally working on that right now. Perfect. Good job, Eric. There we go. <laughs> Nothing like running a live show. You know, I, I, I've got a good friend of mine um, who did the Bank Social Media Conference out of New Jersey, and he does a, a weekly podcast called Bank on It. And it's a podcast, so you never know when you're going to kind of participate in the conversation with him. He records it, and then he's got a bunch of post-editing where he cleans it up and takes out the ums and the ands and the oopses. Um, it's not really something we do here at the, either the Banker Education Series or on my free webinar Wednesday show. It's kind of like operating without a net and uh, we've got to think on our feet and be a little spontaneous. But, we've got our own little radio show. You, you can't rewind and do it over again. So, but that, that's um, what I used to love about live radio. It just seemed like yeah. you were always just uh, you're always on stage. Yep, absolutely. So let's go ahead and. I have unmuted Sally, and uh, looks like Sally has dialed back in over a telephone. Sally, can you hear us okay? I can hear you. There we go. Yeah. Excellent. We so, got uh, you. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you, Sally. And, and one of the things that Eric mentioned earlier uh, when he was introducing me, and uh, he didn't even, I don't think you, you caught how uh, powerful your comment was, uh, Eric, but in eliminating, you mentioned reducing the learning curve. And what this process does, Sally, is it basically eliminates the learning curve. Uh, we've never met. Um, I don't know where you are. I don't know what you do. Uh, and all that doesn't really matter. You uh, sat down and you took the, the, the uh, pro scan survey. Uh, how long did it take you to fill it out? Do you remember? Oh, less than five minutes. Less than five minutes. And so it, it, when, you, when you got done, it was probably even refreshing that there, there wasn't any more to it. But what I'm going to do, Sally, is I'm going to, in just a few minutes, I'm going to introduce you to yourself and to our, our listening audience. And what I, what I always look for is I look at the giftings of, of who a person is. And uh, we're all familiar with strengths finder. Uh, it, but this is a little bit deeper than that. Uh, the, the giftings is a deeper correlation of how we're designed. And uh, you, you've got part of your uh, real gifting is your ability to be adaptable. Uh, your adaptability provides you the ability to uh, wear a variety of hats, wear them well, and uh, and, and, and do it at home, uh, at work, uh, if you're volunteering somewhere, 
That's just who Sally is. Does, does that make sense, Sally? Um, yes. I think Excellent. so. Thank you. Thank you. And um, one, one of the other part of your things goes along with questions. Uh, you're a very factual person, meaning that uh, when you were a little girl, maybe you were very inquisitive when you, you'd ask, you know, your parents or grandparents or people at school or someone, just lots of questions. I'd say that your mind is very curious. And part of your gifting is the ability to ask probably the right questions at the right time. Uh, and or at times maybe ask a few too too many questions just depending on the environment. Does, does that make sense at all? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Now, one of the reasons, Sally, I asked if it makes sense, and, and I know for people listening it may be a little bit annoying, but the reason I do this uh, is simply to extend you the professional courtesy to confirm who you are, not to tell you who you are. So that's basically uh, the purpose I do this. Uh, you're assertive when you need to be uh, in your take charge, uh, uh, as well as part of the other gifting is the ability with structure and detail. Uh, your structure and detail is your higher trait, but all four traits are so tight that you can you can be very adaptable depending upon the role. For example, if you had a uh, hat rack uh, in your office or in, in your study at home, and you had a variety of different hats on the rack, and the hats really uh, were an example of all the different um, uh, responsibilities, you, you simply take it on and take it off very easily. But your primary style is structure and detail, then allowing people or whatever it is to happen, and then the ease of either doing it or delegating it, or, or driving it, uh, you're very persistent, very cautious. Uh, has there anyone ever mentioned that you could be a little stubborn at times? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> that's, that's not sarcasm, is it? That's not sarcasm, <laughs> is it? Oh, no. Yeah. Now, and when I say that, I don't mean it in negative ways. Stubbornness to me is the ability to be steadfast. And and so uh, we uh, we use steadfast rather than stubborn. I was just having fun with you since uh, we, we know each other so well. Uh, part of that part of that gifting is the ability to be a lot of things to a lot of people. And I would say from uh, different environments, either, either work or non-work related, uh, there's times when you feel like you're you're always trying to to be the best, the best um, for each relationship, each responsibility. And uh, does that make sense to you? It does. Can you tell me how to stop doing that? <laughs> well, <it> pro- <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, part of it comes. Part part of it really depends on the, the responsibility that you feel that you have to those involved. And okay. uh, and what what I'd like to to recommend to you is that we don't want we're not going to take the, the entire time here, but I would uh, I'd like to offer you that we'll have a private conversation. We'll go over your scan, we'll go over the stresses and satisfaction, and you're actually doing pretty well in life. And, and we'll go over all those things together. But we'll do a lot of that off the air because uh, of for the sake of time and and, and courtesy to uh, to the rest of the group. How's that sound? Thank you. So, uh, yeah, in summarizing, uh, you know, you've got that natural gifting. I don't know what your your uh, title is of what you do, uh, but I would say that uh, it could be anywhere in management and leadership. And, uh, it, you know, dealing with uh, facts and figures and information, that's part of your gifting. So uh, being in the banking uh, world, you probably, uh, it's probably a very, very good fit for you. So. Any, any questions before we move right along, Sally? I don't think so. Okay, perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. How, was the accuracy, how was the accuracy for you? Um, it was pretty good. I had a couple of questions, but I'll save them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I appreciate that. All righty. Thank you, Sally. Well, appreciate it. Thank you, Sally. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute your line again. So if you yep. want to hop back on or ask a question, just go ahead and type it into the chat area, and I can go ahead and unmute you. So thanks again for participating and uh, okay. being a brave volunteer. One, one right. of the factual 
yeah, one of the things is that when people are very tight to the line, uh, the challenge of doing a quick, quick, uh, I call it one-on-one, -on -one, is uh, very, very difficult. And for the sake of time, uh, we, we just couldn't invest much more. But yeah. So, now, uh, one yeah, of the yeah, things, yeah, it, yes, sir. I was going to say, since you know me, and and I'm suspecting, I, I recognize a lot of names that are part of today's live session. There are a few that I don't recognize, obviously, which is a good thing. That means new people are coming around. Um, but using the example that I shared kind of at the beginning as it relates to, you know, myself and my assistant, um, and you've already said you and I are very similar in nature, a little bit on the extroverted side, a little low conformity, kind of like to do our own thing a little bit. Um, if, if I worked for Sally, maybe I reported to her, um, are there any areas maybe from an insight now that you know what kind of makes Sally tick a little bit that mm -hmm. potentially cause a little friction if she were to either work with either you or myself um, and how those maybe could be alleviated now that we kind of mm -hmm. have an understanding of one another? Excellent. Yeah, per perfect question. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, because both you and I are intuitive with Sally's behavior being factual, her natural style would be to ask his uh, ask his questions, and over time, that the uh, the situation uh, may uh, with you with you and I uh, not needing a lot of information to make our decisions. Sometimes, when an intuitive decision maker hears a person asking a lot of questions, it can sound it can sound like maybe that person doesn't trust us. So what I would suggest to Sally would be that when you're working with Eric and I, that uh, you know, hopefully you won't need as much information or tell us the information that you have to have, but please try to limit it at just uh, just so much, but don't, don't continue to ask us the same questions day in and day out or so on and so forth. So the, the, yeah. biggest, the biggest challenge between any relationship at work or home is is the style of which a uh, person makes their decisions, which in her case is logic, and which is in our case feeling, and uh, and that would be the big, uh, that would be the number one. Uh, and then you and I would have to be a lot more detailed with her, right? But uh, she, in fact, she could be our glue because she's got that natural gifting to put together the, the substance of things, and whereas you and I are just not wired that way. And so uh, that would be the that would be the uh, two areas which would be uh, it actually should be a very good fit for us uh, knowing what we know. Right, but I think that's the trick is knowing what we know and and didn't have really any intent of having it being a similar situation. But in my circumstance, it was also a very factual, detail oriented individual and and. We didn't realize it until after the light bulb went off, but we were actually driving each other nuts by mm -hmm. feeling, you know, and, and so um, I suspect that that probably happens more often than not, where it's it's a it's a thinker feeler, pie in the sky, get your head out of the clouds, give me some details versus, you know, this is just going to work, trust me, and let's just do it, and then we'll figure it out later. Um, those, Absolutely. I suspect, are probably two that really are at odds ends when it comes to interpersonality relationships. You know, it, it really is. And it's sad that, that people can't figure that out before there is, is an issue because uh, that factual style has got that natural ability to, to be such a gift. But if uh, they don't feel they're appreciated and or, um, you know, it just, it just really, it just really causes a, uh, a hiccup. So, yeah. So, all right. Let's uh, let's continue. We're on the the company similarities here. Yeah. Click it again, please. I don't see anything on my end other than company similarities. Uh, all I see is the title. Here we go. Should be there. So there one, go. one one of the one of the areas there is that uh, if you have people, you have behavior related issues. There's just no way to get around it. And and most companies have similar challenges, but the difference is really the leadership. It's really what the leadership believes and if they're ready to fix the process. Uh, the, the problems in banking are similar to the pro problems in manufacturing. The manufacturers have the similar projects of retail. 
it's just uh, it's it's just boils down to people and the misunderstanding of, of people. So, but, but people have to be ready to fix it and move on. Uh, can't keep doing things the same old ways. So in leadership steps, what, what's really fascinating is in all the team discovery and development that I do, and I hand out a questionnaire, the number one problem that I hear in all companies, all companies, is we don't communicate. We can have emails and newsletters and meetings and potlucks and all these wonderful things, but the, comp the employees of the company still say we don't communicate. And, uh, and so the next slide, please, and just keep moving right along for the sake of time. So what goes along with, with the communications is, uh, is really the area of being trustworthy. Uh, a lot of people, when they, when they say that we don't uh, communicate, it's, it's that uh, it, it starts from not communicating or we feel misunderstood, and then the next area of flow, it goes to the area of, of trust. And then when that breaks, it, it tarnishes the morale. And then when, when the morale is tarnished, it moves into uh, turnover. Uh, and I say unwanted because some turnover is healthy, but the unwanted, the people that need to be there, uh, all of a sudden don't feel like they're uh, really a part of the team anymore. And, and when you have that, uh, that, that has a direct correlation on the customer excellence, the customer service. So very, the first and most is to understand and so you can improve communications and then that kind of uh, peels back the onion. Any questions there, Eric? Unmute myself so we go, here. Oh, yeah, perfect. So we go from, we go from the business environment in, to flowing in now to the personal achievement we, and it's knowing yourself. And, and I, when I talk to people, it's, not, you know, a lot of people, when we talk about knowing yourself, they just go, uh, yeah, I know myself, I kind of know myself, or so on and so forth. But they really, there's really a, a misperception of who they are. Uh, the, the next thing is really accepting the design, accepting yourself. Um, a lot of people um, feel they are, I mean, I grew up most of my life probably feeling that I was flawed. Uh, my behavior, Eric, uh, I've got very high energy, and it's uh, my energy is so high that I really felt that uh, uh, God didn't break the mold when He when He uh, provided me uh, life on this earth because uh, uh, it was just I just felt so out of place. But by knowing yourself and then accepting yourself, the third thing is really to celebrate who you are, celebrate your design, no matter how flawed you may think. Uh, you, you know, you've got that natural gifting. And when we have the ability to know and understand and celebrate, there's something really special, Eric, about when someone celebrates who they are, uh, wonderful things take place. And then, then the next thing is really understanding the roles that we're involved in. Uh, these roles can be the role of a husband or a wife. Uh, then you go to work and you have the role of being either a manager or a president or a vice president or a teller or whomever you might be. Uh, the role of a daughter, the role of a, 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 a brother. We have all these different roles and that we're trying to be or not to be a different person based on the demands of our roles. So uh, understanding those roles of, of who you need to be to those uh, responsibilities are pretty, pretty uh, important as well. And then understanding the difference between changing and adjusting. And this is what really throws a lot of folks off here because if I told you that Dude, yeah, you know, I love you, but you got to change, Eric. You, you need to tone down your social style, and you just need to change. What what would go through your head, Eric? Uh, I would say, yeah, right. That's who I am. Deal with it. Exactly. But what happens is that what does go through our head is that what's wrong with me? Who am I that I need to change? And and uh, and so in a culture of of trying to have people change based on for whatever reason, what well, we need to understand that uh, we all need to adjust. Uh, adjusting is is a short-term commitment, where change is a long-term commitment. 
and based on our behaviors, if we can remember that we all need to, to adjust to be the type of person that we need to be, rather than to try to change and be that type of person all the time. And so that's a, that's a, that's a deal, that's a deal maker right there when people can have this concept of, of adjusting rather than changing. Next slide, sir. One, one quick comment on that. Um, mm -hmm. Prior to being exposed to the, the wonders that came with Don Crosby and the PDP and, and my kind of revelation with my assistant, um, in my early years at the bank, there was one employee that, uh, for whatever reason, she was getting under my skin significantly to the point where I just wasn't enjoying my job. She was not somebody that I necessarily reported to, although we sat close to one another. And I, I, I don't know what the reason for it was, but I seem to have been exposed to a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. And in that book, one mm -hmm. of the things that it talked about was the fact that you can't really change somebody else. You have mm -hmm. to understand why they do what they do and figure mm -hmm. out how you can manipulate and modify your behavior because even though you're changing a little bit, the relationship is going to be so much better and, and they may never even know that you're bending a little bit to make things easier. Um, that was about a six-month process for me where I bought the book, mm -hmm. I read it, I tried different things, and I will tell you at the end, we had a much better relationship. Uh, I don't think mm -hmm. she even knew that, that that was going on, but our relationship was so, so much better. Um, mm -hmm. But I can tell you a five-minute little questionnaire and a 15-minute conversation with you was uh, was much faster and more efficient than me trying to self-diagnose what was going on and, and manipulate things. So it's not to say that understanding others and making changes for the better uh, and adjusting your behavior can't be done without a tool like this, but that light bulb just went off as you were talking with before and after, and um, wow, what a difference. So a little oh, bit yeah, of a rope. I hadn't even thought of that until this point, actually, so I just wanted to make sure I shared that's that. That's excellent. See, one of the things that uh, I don't know if you remember, but before you and I met, um, you know, I was working with the, the president of the bank, and we worked with uh, the main office uh, and uh, all, the, all the tellers. We worked, I worked with the entire staff, and uh, before we, we got out to your branch, and so um, that's that's what we did with with with, with what you and I accomplished. We did that with uh, 150 other employees. So, you know, if, if we think about life's greatest challenges, most of our greatest challenges includes our behavior, someone else's, or both. And I mean, I do a lot in the nonprofit world, and uh, I always have to take a deep breath, Eric. It's like um, I just have to sit back and go, you know, they didn't mean to 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 make me angry. Uh, I'm not going to take it personal. Uh, the reality is all behavioral traits have the ability to take things personal. And uh, and that's where we just have to take a deep breath and just really uh, understand our behaviors to be the best of the best no matter what type of things that we're going through. Next slide, please. And uh, another great quote, this one's by Socrates. Uh, who's credited for saying, know thyself. And, and here's my spin to that, Eric. Uh, by knowing ourselves, it can be a fluid action to control ourselves. And that's what makes this, uh, this process so powerful. And, and giving of ourselves is more natural. And so it's hard for a lot of people to give when they're, you know, honestly, uh, you know, not in control of their lives. And when all that happens, then we become more effective, successful, fulfilling people. And this is a very very powerful underlying comment to the know thyself quote, but uh, the fluid action of controlling ourselves is so, so important. Um, you know, how many times have, I do a lot of work in, in a prison in Louisiana, we just uh, did a year and a half project working with inmates, and it was, it was based all on their behavior, in, in introducing to them why they did certain things. And, and what they did was, in the criminal world, was not much different reasons why people do things uh, outside in the natural world. But, uh, I thought that was interesting. Next slide, sir. So, you know, our objective really is to slow down. 
you, know, you never know whose life you're affecting, either positively or otherwise. And depending upon how our behavior is wired, will determine. See, everything starts, Eric, in the mind. And once it starts in the mind and we start thinking about it, when it actually is implemented, it, it comes through our behavior. So we have we have starting in the mind, and then based on our behavior, we've got that ability to either uh, you know be verbal and, and, and just throw it out there, or be harsh and insulting and just controlling and, and, and just maybe uh, uh, steamroller wise. Or but there's such predictability when we know someone's behavior. Uh, of how they're going to act or react based based on what they're going through. Next slide, sir. Oh, I forgot that was and, on there. That's a good, good yeah, point. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and, yeah. And if, you're, if your spouse has a good day, you'll probably have a good night. And, and I told that to people for a long, long time, and, and they kind of laughed, but it was true, is that when my wife worked, uh, uh, I could always tell how her day went. And, and that's why when I work with companies here, I don't look at just the employee, but I look at uh, the, uh, the the family unit behind the employee and the responsibility that, that a manager or a company has to the community based on on, on a family. And uh, it, it's just pretty profound. I, I thought we took this piece out of there, but uh, I guess I'm glad we left it in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, even with our even with our uh, hiccups of audio and uh, audio visual, I guess uh, you know we we finished pretty much on time. One of the you things did. that I did, did one of the things that I failed to really recognize in the, in the presentation was emphasizing too much on the role. And uh, I, I think if anybody, if I had one thing to leave behind for everyone, it would be to really uh, look at your roles uh, of life. Both professionally and, and personally, uh, you know, wh how does your behavior need to be to be that kind of guy or that kind of woman? And uh, I, I'll give a short story, Eric. I'll turn turn it back over to you. But a, a month ago or so, I was working with a family, and uh, two kids, 14-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son. The 12-year-old is autistic, and uh, he took he took a scan and he, and I introduced him to his mother uh, I, prior to meeting the young man, and the mother sat there and cried with because of confirmation. She said, "This doesn't make sense. I don't understand how you know my autistic son when you've never met him and when um, when he's got these these challenges." And uh, and basically, the young man was gifted with with the ability to read uh, and and uh, his behavior is. Uh, is such where uh, it's disruptive, but he, he still has that ability to slow down and and, uh, and and do the things that he likes to do. But where I was going with that, Eric, is the role of the husband and the wife with that type of challenge is where it, it gets. It, that's where the rubber hits the road. So it's all of us really understanding our own behavior so well, so we can slow down to understand those those issues that we have with our kids or grandkids or or coworkers and uh, and that that really kind of summarizes I think from me Eric. Absolutely. Um I do uh I got a question from the audience um and then I also want to make sure before we get to the end of the hour um Don has been very gracious with uh an offer. If you are interested, I know we did have a volunteer who's going to get a more detailed session with Don to kind of go through some stuff that might have been a little bit more private than what we necessarily want to share in a webinar for the rest of the world. Um, but if you're interested in taking one of these 60-question uh, assessments and having Don introduce you to yourself and seeing your, you know, kind of firsthand what can be revealed and then maybe having a conversation about how this could be useful either in your family life or at the bank or in an organization or a nonprofit or something along those lines. Um, Don has agreed to uh, allow uh, uh, the Banker Education Series folks a 20% discounts. And Don, maybe you can talk a little bit about what an assessment typically costs if somebody were just to coordinate one through you. and. Um, just basically email you at that Don at Global Behavior and mention the show and 
you'll go ahead and take care of everything. But what what economically speaking are we talking about here? Yeah, uh, we have a we have a nonprofit rate uh, on my website donkrosby.net of forty seven dollars. And so the uh, twenty percent we just rounded off, and it only be thirty-seven dollars for each person. And so okay. uh, now on the, on the website too, there's a variety of different uh, things that I offer on how we use this with uh, with the family unit uh, and or in the, in the business environment. What what happened there is you know, through the years I, I get a phone call from the president of a company, and he'd say, "Can you do for my family what you did for my my company?" And so, because of that happening so often, I created the uh, personal market uh, that's filling that. So, but, okay. yeah, thirty-seven dollars. It ch it changed my life twenty-six years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, it's certainly a validator. And I remember when when you met Alicia for the first time, you introduced mm -hmm. her to herself, and um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of freaked her out a little bit, but talked about <laughs> things, and uh, you know, so it's. If nothing else, I mean, I know that what you do and what is provided is way more than entertainment value, but um, mm -hmm. the the benefit that you get for just that is, uh, in my opinion, tremendous. So um, the question came through. There was mention earlier about, let's see, mentioned earlier about job descriptions. How mm -hmm. does this work to help create job descriptions or roles for employees? Yeah, perfect question. Uh, the uh, it, it's not necessarily the job description, but it's the, we call it a job model, and and the job model uh, is the uh, accumulation of the behavior that a successful person need to have on the job. So uh, what we do is you would still use the job description that you have for that particular position is the essential function of the job. And then through our technology, uh, we, we train you on how to create a job model. And the way, there's two ways of creating a job model. Let's say you've got several um, uh, existing employees that do a really nice job. And if we just had two or three more people like Sally and, and Becky and, and Pete, then things would be a lot, lot easier around here. And so uh, you can take, you take their behavior and, uh, the averages of those behavior, and along in addition to a, another survey that we have for the management, which uh, they complete, uh, and it uh, uh, helps uh, create the different uh, intensities of each trait that's necessary for the position. So the science behind the job modeling is very, very nice, very wonderful, and theoretically does is work at where they have the turnover and then they start they create a model for that position and then they just continue to create job models for each position within within the co the company. And uh, and then you also use that same job modeling for position coaching, measuring people that aren't really performing well to the model Eric to see well Showing them how different they are from the model, and this is how they need to be if if they're going to be the type of person that they, they desire to be. So. Yeah, I think the the uh, and and we did participate in the modeling process, so I'm very familiar with mm -hmm. it. And the analogy oh, that yeah. jumps to my mind is people will oftentimes say, you know, you're either on the bus or you're under the bus. Get with it. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to come with mm -hmm. us or you're not. And I think. What this platform does is it says, okay, well, are the right people actually on the bus and are they in the right seats? Because somebody that, like a Sally, that might be more detailed, factual, orientated, you know, if they're asked to put on a, you know, some sort of a creative seminar or come up with something or they need to do things uh, that aren't necessarily within their personality style, it's going to be very uncomfortable and frustrating. And if you were to put somebody like myself in a role uh, as an accountant, it's going to drive me nuts because numbers and, you know, those sorts of things, I'm going to be very unhappy. And you may find that you have individuals that are good quality individuals, but when you do their analysis, you find out that, you know, no wonder they're not super happy and elated and doing just a so-so job because 
that job or that role or that function just doesn't fit who they are and it's causing them a little bit of angst every time they come in because yeah. they're having to fight their natural style. But if you put them in a different role, they could exceed and, you know, the sky's the limit. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and the, biggest, the biggest drawback in, in companies today is, is the role. And uh, I'll have people call me, executives, and they'll say, Don, can you take a look at this person's profile? And they say, should I, should I hire them? And I always answer it with a question. I say, well, what's, what's, what's the model? What type, of, what type of behavior does this person need to have to be successful? And so the job modeling is almost like really creating the target first so you know the ideal person that you need to have rather than going out and trying to find a person and make a person fit into a position without having the, the role defined. Yeah. And the problem is the problem is that so many people are burned out with job descriptions that when you think of measuring a position, you can just, all you think of is a job description and how painful it is. And uh and, and so that piece of it is always misunderstood. But the secret sauce to reducing turnover and improving morale is really job modeling and measuring applicants to the model to see where they fit the best. So that was a great question. Yeah, good. Well, we are a little bit over, and I can sit here and jaw with you pretty much all afternoon long. I love our opportunities to catch up and talk. And uh, I've told you before, if I could clone myself, um, this would certainly be an area that I would love to spend more time in um, because I think it is such a powerful tool on so many different levels. So I commend you for what you're doing, and it's always great oh, to see your you. success. Kudos on the new book, and uh, I honestly you. do hope that you get several people to take you up on the opportunity to have you introduce uh, introduce themselves uh, or you to introduce them to them uh, when they go ahead and take care of the offer. So, yeah, yeah. The other thing, along with that offer, Eric, is that generally they, that forty-seven dollars is just the report, and then, and then we charge for my time. But because of what you do, uh, I'm I'm throwing my time in for free. So once they buy their report for thirty-seven dollars, I mean they get the, the, the free consultation with it. So it's just a sure. gift because of you and who you are and. Uh, and and how you get this? So I, I I compliment you because you're a champion on this stuff, and not yeah. everybody sees the importance. So uh, kudos yeah. to you, my friend. Cool, good. Well, thanks everybody for joining us live. Uh, appreciate those of you that stuck around and uh, spent an extra five minutes and cut into the the, the next hour of your day. But hopefully you got some good ideas, um, Don. Have an excellent conversation with Sally, and uh, we'll be curious to hear how that goes, if there's any feedback um, beyond that. Uh, look forward to seeing those of you that would like to join me next month um, on the show. We're going to be back again in June. I believe uh, the one and only Lee Weatherington is going to be joining us and uh, looking forward to his insight in the world of uh, fintech and what's kind of new and cutting edge in the world of financial technologies. If you've ever had the opportunity to hear Lee speak or present at a banking conference, um, you'll know that it's going to be an excellent show, and um, I'm pleased that he's become a good friend of mine over the years and going to join us. So with that, we'll draw today's session to a close. We'll get the recording available online here shortly. And uh, again, certainly appreciate everybody's time, and thank you, Don, for uh, making this fit into your schedule. I'm so glad we were able to get this to work today. My pleasure. Thank you, Eric, and good. thank you, everyone, for attending. appreciate it. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful week, and hopefully we'll see you back here again in June. Until then, take care.